Hi. As many of you will know, I do a lot of tinkering with retro PC stuff. It's a fun hobby, but old hardware and software requires old computers, and so I've had to maintain PCs from several different eras to be able to cover all the possible combinations of standards. Getting those PCs to interoperate with modern stuff is often a huge pain in the hoop, and because they're so old, they can often be slow and unreliable. However, I've often wanted to build a PC that was reasonably fast, convenient and modern, but with enough backwards compatibility to allow me to play with all the weird old software and hardware that really gets me off. Such a PC should be able to run stuff from the early 80s all the way up to the early 2000s, and would really save me a lot of time and space from having to keep a different PC for every occasion. PCs like this are often referred to as retro rockets over on the Vogons forum, and I really like that name, so let's start building Rasterize Retro Rocket. This video is brought to you by PCBWay, who have very kindly supplied circuit boards for all my projects for nearly a year now. New users get $5 off their first order, and you can get assembly services for as little as $30 for up to 20 boards. I recently had some boards assembled by them, and the work they did was really great. I'll be talking about that in an upcoming video. They also now offer very reasonably priced low-volume CNC machining and 3D printing services, so give them a shout if any of that sounds useful to you. Anyway, let's discuss the requirements of our retro rocket. The most important requirement is a motherboard that has an ISA slot. These slots were introduced with the first ever IBM PC in 1981, and were included with pretty much every PC for the following 20 years. So, as you can imagine, a huge range of retro PC stuff relies on the ISA slot. Sound cards are a particular sticking point here. Whereas stuff like graphics cards and hard drive controllers eventually migrated onto modern standards, sound cards had to stay as ISA because of the huge back catalogue of DOS games that only work with ISA sound cards. So, if I want to be able to play DOS games, I have to have an ISA slot on my PC. ISA slots started disappearing from consumer motherboards at the turn of the century. Certainly the last new PC I owned with one was a 300MHz Intel Pentium 2 from about 1998. But ISA slots were pretty common on Pentium 3 motherboards too, meaning clock speeds up to 1.4GHz should be doable. Once you go any newer than that though, ISA slots become much rarer and you start getting into compatibility issues. I do have a few exotic industrial ISA motherboards that support Pentium 4s and even Xeons, but I really don't want to risk damaging them with random experiments. So let's try AMD. As it happens, motherboards supporting the Athlon range of processors often have ISA slots, and are typically capable of running processors with clock speeds up to 2.1GHz. This will be capable of running anything up to Windows XP very nicely. I picked this motherboard, which is a QDI Kinetis 7E, based on the VIA KT133 chipset. It only has one ISA slot, but that's fine. I only really need it for sound card support anyway. Here's the processor that we're going to use. It's an Athlon XP 2800 Plus running at 2.1GHz. It's the fastest processor that the 133MHz chipset in the motherboard supports, so it's a no-brainer really. The most RAM this motherboard supports is 1.5GB, so I got three 512MB sticks and added them too. With three different slot types on this motherboard, I have lots of different graphics card options. For Windows, I'll want a fast AGP graphics card like this NVIDIA GeForce 7600. Although this will run most DOS games too, some DOS games will benefit from a PCI VGA card like this S3 Verge DX. This will also be compatible with EGA and CGA for older DOS games. I can even put an ISA Hercules monochrome graphics card in if I want to play the tiny selection of games that use that. But for now I'm just going to go with the GeForce 7600 as it should be compatible with all the operating systems I want to run. Sound card wise, I have a lot of options here too, but I'm going to go with this Ensonic Soundscape Opus. This is actually the card from my family's first ever PC, a Gateway 2000 Pentium running at 90MHz. The unique sound of its wavetable MIDI synth is pretty nostalgic for me, and for example this is exactly how the music from Doom sounds in my head. It also has good Sound Blaster Pro emulation, reasonable MT32 emulation, and hilariously bad AdLib emulation. For a case, I decided to use this extremely period appropriate one from the first computer I ever actually owned myself. My parents got it for me in 2002 as a high school graduation present from the legendary but now sadly defunct Watford Electronics. It still has a sticker on the inside showing the original specs, including a slightly slower Athlon XP, as well as the dreaded GeForce 4MX that wouldn't even run some games that came out six months later. Shout out to Yasir, Yasser, if they're watching. 
Obviously it needs thoroughly gutted and nearly 20 years worth of dust hoovered out. Now you've all probably seen a million PC building videos before, so I'm not going to go into that, but I will briefly mention what I'm going to use as storage. In the last few years, SD card to IDE adapters have really come down in price and are available for less than a tenner. These are ideal, I can have dozens of different SD cards with different operating systems on them, and it makes copying files between the rocket and my main PC super easy. I haven't figured out a good place to mount it yet, so for the moment I just cut a slot in one of the PC's drive bay covers and blue tacked the adapter to the inside of it. Now I can change cards without taking the PC apart. Sorted! By the way, if you're like me and have a million SD cards lying about, the best storage solution I've found is this credit card sized thing from JJC. It stores 10 cards and it has space to write what's on each card, or for blank cards you can peel off the label and see the card storage space directly. They're under a tenner and I'll give you a link in the video description. Anyway, now the PC is built, let's do some initial testing with MS-DOS 6.22, which I already have pre-installed on an SD card. This works perfectly and it gives us a chance to give it a quick benchmark with Phil's benchmark pack. This PC is literally 20 times faster than the PCs most benchmarks are expecting, so many of them either crash or give results that make no sense, but Speedsys does a pretty good job, and of course Doom and Quake both run insanely fast. Now, you might think that running DOS games on a PC this powerful is a bit overkill, but build engine games are notorious for requiring exponentially more power at higher resolutions, and both Blood and Shadow Warrior run much better than I've ever seen them run before, at resolutions of up to 1600 by 1200 also, most people running Quake would probably use GL Quake on Windows, but I think the software renderer looks better in some circumstances than the hardware one, so it's nice to be able to run that at high resolutions too. Now, obviously this machine isn't a perfect fit for all DOS games. Even some later DOS games run far too fast on it. GTA, for example, is unplayable without the frame limiter on, and with it on it seems too slow to me, or maybe I'm just misremembering. But it isn't my intention to support every DOS game ever made, just to have a very high performance environment for testing as wide a range of hardware and software as possible. The next OS I'd like to install is Windows 98, which is a really great platform for running DOS games, as it still has the ability to reboot into MS-DOS mode, but unlike MS-DOS, it supports hard drives larger than 2GB. This is where I hit a bit of a snag. None of the ISA sound cards I have worked in Windows 98. I just kept getting this error message. I must have spent two days trying to get this to work, but I just couldn't. If anyone has any ideas, let me know in the comments. I'll leave a list of everything I've tried so far in the video description. Luckily, the motherboard's built-in sound output works perfectly, so until I figure this out I suppose I'll have to use that for Windows games. The graphics card was a bit of a problem too, as Nvidia never officially released Windows 98 drivers for the GeForce 7 series. There are however some hacked drivers available that I'll give you a link to. These drivers didn't work until I'd also updated Windows using the Auto Patcher tool, which I'll also give you a link to. But once everything was installed, Windows 98 ran at a super crisp 1080p60 which was an absolute delight to see. Even better, it completely destroys Windows 98 era games. Deus Ex, for example, runs at a locked 60fps at 1080p and looks absolutely wonderful. Well, as wonderful as it can, anyway. I suppose I might want to install a 3DFX card for playing Glide games, but this will definitely do for the moment. Anyway, I copied a selection of DOS and Windows games over and spent a few hours testing it. Everything from super early 80s games like Alley Cat all the way up to Unreal Tournament 2004 worked just great, so I imagine I'll do most of my gaming on this configuration. In fact, it occurred to me that it's the only computer I've ever built that can natively run Doom 1, 2 and 3 at the same time. Windows XP is the other major operating system I'm going to use on this PC, but there's a problem. You see, the sound card's drivers were written with Windows NT 3.51 in mind, and refused point blank to install on Windows XP. They do, however, work on Windows 2000, and if you then go on to upgrade that to Windows XP, then the drivers happily come along for the ride. It's slightly surreal using an ancient ISA sound card on an operating system this new, but it works perfectly as far as I can tell, even on DirectX games. And just to preempt all you hilarious people in the comments, yes, it does run Crisis. Of course, I have to turn all the settings down to minimum to get anywhere near a decent frame rate, but it's actually sort of playable. I wonder if anyone has ever run Crisis Audio through an ISA sound card before. Another fun thing I wanted to try was putting a Hercules graphics adapter in it. Hercules was an early alternative to the original IBM monochrome display adapter that added relatively high resolution graphics support for the time. It's slightly ridiculous using a graphics card this old on a computer this new, but believe it or not it wasn't that uncommon for software developers to have a second monochrome monitor for debugging. 
Sometimes these features were left in the final game. For example, MechWarrior 2 displays some AI information. I have no idea what any of it means though, I don't really like MechWarrior. But I have a much more interesting use case for a Hercules adapter on a powerful computer. You see, a very clever human going by the name Viti95 has developed a fork of Doom that's been optimised for old hardware. As well as improving frame rates, Fast Doom also adds support for alternative graphics modes like CGA, EGA, and yes, you guessed it, Hercules. However, my only other computer with a Hercules adapter is an Amstrad PC1640 with an 8MHz 8086 processor, so I've never been able to try Fast Doom Hercules until now. And doesn't it look awesome? You could totally complete the game like this. Ironically, you actually need a much faster PC than normal to run the Hercules mode, as it runs at a higher resolution than VGA Doom and does dithering in real time. Anyway, that's pretty much it for my retro rocket build. I have a number of interesting projects coming up that make extensive use of this PC, so if you don't want to miss those, then get subscribed and notified. Thanks very much for watching, and see you next time!